Early on, Microsoft Teams introduced webhooks as a way to connect external services to Microsoft Teams channels. Webhooks were provided in two types, outgoing webhooks and incoming webhooks. Microsoft also introduced something called an Office 365 connector, which is just an installable incoming webhook. But over time, Microsoft Teams invested in and favored the bot infrastructure support in Microsoft Azure for web service communication instead of maintaining their own endpoints for handling incoming webhooks and submitting messages to outgoing webhooks. Recently, Microsoft announced the retirement of Office 365 connectors on a very aggressive schedule. As of August 15th, 2024, customers could no longer create or install new Office 365 connectors in their Microsoft Teams environments. And then, just a month and a half later, on October the 1st, 2024, Microsoft is going to shut off all Office 365 connectors across all Microsoft Teams deployments. That means that you need to get to work migrating your Office 365 connectors to a new solution. But how? Keep watching to learn how much time you have to get your Office 365 connectors migrated to a new solution. And I'm also going to show you how you can easily do this using a notification bot for Microsoft Teams. Hi, I'm Andrew. And if Office 365 connectors and bots and Microsoft Teams, if those things interest you, please hit the like button below the video. It helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel with the button below the video so you can see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365, including Microsoft Teams developers. And check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365, Microsoft Azure, and Microsoft Teams space for full stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. Let's get back to that retirement notice. Now, while Microsoft has been discouraging the use of incoming and outgoing webhooks, including Microsoft 365 connectors, their recent retirement announcement of Office 365 connectors, it doesn't give customers much time to migrate to a new solution because on August the 15th, 2024, no new connectors can be created or installed in your team's environment. And then just one and a half months later on October the 1st, 2024, they're gonna shut off all connectors. They're not gonna work anymore across all Teams deployments. The primary reason for this is to align with Microsoft's focus on security as outlined in their Secure Future Initiative. From my perspective, it seems like Microsoft wants to drop their own webhook infrastructure that's managed by the Teams group. They aim to support only connections from Power Automate and the Azure AI bot service, which these things are going to use more secure implementations. These implementations leverage Microsoft Intra's ID uh, for external processes to authenticate into Microsoft Azure's bot infrastructure so that they can communicate with Microsoft Teams. And in contrast, webhooks used no authentication or a much less secure process compared to the OAuth-based uh, Microsoft Intra ID. Now, the announcement from Microsoft recommends that customers should use Power Automate and this workflow app. However, you can also migrate your connectors to a bot. Now, using a bot is going to enable better code management and deployment, versioning, simpler testing story, telemetry, debugging, and a much more transparency into what's going on. Let's first look at what an Office 365 connector is. An Office 365 connector, it offers an installable incoming webhook. So how does this work? Let's look at what an incoming webhook is. You manually register the incoming webhook in a channel, you take the endpoint Microsoft Teams gives you and you update your code to post to that endpoint. Then, when your app wants to send a message to all the channels where the webhook was registered, it loops through a list of all those endpoints that you've saved and it sends the message as an HTTP post to each one. So how does an Office 365 connector differ from one of those incoming webhooks? Well, the most significant change is the removal of the manual aspects of an incoming webhook. Office 365 connectors introduce the ability to add a configuration step where you can run your own code as a developer. Your Office 365 connector deployed as an app to your team's environment can be installed in a channel similar to an incoming webhook. However, when it's installed, Microsoft Teams displays your configuration dialog where you can collect configuration details. Upon submitting the configuration dialog, your code will pro programmatically get the URL from the unique endpoint for the channel for Microsoft Teams using the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. It saved that link to your app's code base along with any other settings collected in the configuration page. Now from there, it works just like an incoming webhook. When your app wants to send a message to all the channels where the webhook is registered, it loops through the list of endpoints and it sends the message as an HTTP post to each one. But Office 365 connectors are going away. 
and they're going away quickly. So you can implement the same setup using a bot by following a notification or proactive message pattern. Now you can do the exact same thing in an Office 365 connector that you can do with a bot. Many of the parts of the bot are the same as the Office 365 connector. So how are they the same? You still own the code for the custom developer hosted service that sends the messages. So you still need to get a list of all the endpoints where it's been installed, and then you have your code enumerate through all those different endpoints and send a post to each one. But how are we going to get all those endpoints into our service? That's where it's different. You don't have to keep track of all the channels where the bot's installed, like you had to with, in the case of an incoming webhook or an Office 365 connector. Bots are registered in the Azure AI bot service, and each bot is associated with a Microsoft Intra ID. Your web service will connect to the Azure AI bot service by authenticating with Microsoft Intra ID. And for every channel where your bot's installed, instead of you keeping a track of all of those in some list, you can ask Microsoft Teams in the Azure AI bot service for a list of where everything has been registered. They handle all of that for you. Your app or your web service is gonna authenticate with Microsoft Intro ID and connect to the Azure AI bot service. And it's gonna ask for a list of all the places where the bot's been installed. Your code will then go through that installed list, allowing you to send notifications to all the Microsoft Teams channels where it's been installed. Now, in addition to not having to keep track of all the locations where the bot's installed, because the bot created the message, the bot can actually change or update or delete the message in the future. And this allows a notification that can be sent as an adaptive card to become like a mini application because you can replace the existing message with a new adaptive card from your bot. This differs from Office 365 connectors. They can't change messages. They can only send them as just a fire and forget. Moreover, the bot can monitor interactions like reactions, such as a thumbs up or a thumbs down on a message. And they can also receive notifications to respond to or update the message. And in fact, you can even go further than Office 365 connectors by having the bot receive messages through user replies. The Microsoft Teams documentation and Teams Toolkit templates refer to these as notification bots, also known as proactive bots. However, you don't have to create a new bot code base or follow their templates exactly. You can modify your existing Office 365 connector to use the Azure AI bot service infrastructure in your code. Once you've registered the Microsoft Intro ID application, you can use the conversation bot class from the Microsoft Teams toolkit package, the at Microsoft Teams FX package, to connect to the Azure AI bot service and send those messages. So what I'm gonna do here to create one of these is I'm gonna go, I have the Teams toolkit for Visual Studio Code already installed. So I'm gonna select it in this left-hand rail. I'll choose create a new app, I'll choose bot, and then I'm gonna choose a chat notification message. And in this case here, I can choose the different triggers that I wanna use. So these are different ways that I can go trigger the bot to actually wake up and run. So I can use a Restify server, I can use an Azure function, either with like on a trigger based off a timer, or I can do it based off an HTTP request. I'm gonna use just the simple one of just this HTTP trigger, and I'll make it TypeScript, and let's just go ahead and throw this into, um, let me throw this into where I wanna create my sample projects. So into dev, and we'll call this test02. All right, so VS Code is going to launch uh, a new instance with our project. And what I want you to look at here, this is what we're gonna get. So I have this index.ts file. So what this is doing is this is creating an HTTP server uh, that is listening on the current port. Now, what I'm then gonna do is it's listening for an HTTP post to the slash API slash notification endpoint. When it receives one of those notifications, what it's going to then do is it's going to use this notification app object to go make a request to first authenticate and make a request to the Azure AI bot service to ask the Azure AI bot service and Microsoft Teams, where has this bot been installed? What channels has it been installed in? What personal scope, et cetera. So it's gonna do that. If you see up here at the very top, you can see here that we are, in, we are importing that from this notification app um, that you see listed here inside of this internal uh, folder for initialize. So if I look at initialize here, what is it doing? This is creating a new instance of a conversation bot and I'm passing in an adapter configuration. So this adapter configuration, this is gonna contain the ID for our bot, which is the intra ID, or the ID of our Microsoft intra application, the password on how it's gonna authenticate and uh, if it's multi-tenant or single-tenant. 
This is how our web service is going to connect into the Azure AI bot service in an authenticated way. So let's go back over here to our index.ts. What it will then do is that after we've received this request, it's going to then get a list of all of the paged installations. It's going to get 100 items per page, and then you get this continuation token. So what that does is by now, I'm going to have a list, all this page data. I'm going to have this list of all of the places where this bot's been installed. And now I'm going to want to enumerate through each one of those different places and send an, a, an activity, a message to Microsoft Teams so that that notification will show up inside of a channel. It's just like how an Office 365 connector works. I've installed it into a channel and then I'm going to be sending an HTTP post into Microsoft Teams. It's going to add a message, whatever I send it, that's going to show up inside that channel. So here, I'm just going to walk through all of those installations. So for each installation, we'll call it a target. I'm then going to send an adaptive card. And in this case here, the adaptive card is going to have a title, a name, a description, and a URL. The rest of all of this, these comments here is just different scenarios on how you could implement this. Then it's going to then go on to the next item, our continuation token to get another hundred items, uh, hundred, uh, another page of installations if this bot's been installed more than 100 times. Okay, that's pretty straightforward and you can visualize how that works. Let me show you another one that I have here that I've created. So let me open this one up. So in this scenario, what I have is inside of my server, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have an endpoint here called a support ticket notification. So what this is gonna simulate is that I want an external service to send a, a notification message into a channel uh, whenever I have one or more new support tickets that I need to address. That message is gonna add an adaptive card and that adaptive card is going to contain just a, the current ticket. But if I have multiple tickets, there'll be buttons on the card to where a user can interact with it to either navigate forward or navigate backwards to see a list of all the ticket items. So here, what we're gonna do again, we're gonna just grab a list of all the items that have been installed uh, and a, a pages of 100. For each one of those 100 pages, we're then gonna enumerate through all the items in the list sending an adaptive card to each one of the places where the bot has been installed. Then I'm gonna use my support card template and I'm gonna simply just add in some custom data that I wanna to bind to that card to display to the end user. And so here, if I come over here and look at the card on my support card, it's just gonna have a text block for new tickets to be processed. There'll be a container that just talks about the title of the ticket, the ticket ID, and then I'm gonna have a couple buttons here for ticket previous and ticket next. Um, now, what I wanna do when I show this card, I only want the, the previous button to show up when the previous uh, button is enabled, and I only want the next one to show up when the next one is, is enabled, all right? So if I come back over here and I look at my uh, bot where I'm getting those requests, here you can see that I'm only gonna show the next and previous when those are submitted. Then, whenever someone clicks the button on the adaptive card, that's gonna send a message back to my bot. So when he receives this message at the slash API slash messages endpoint, which is the default endpoint for my, uh, for my bot, it's gonna run this Teams bot right here. So if I go look at Teams bot, what that will do is it will grab a list of all of my support tickets. And then each time I get a new request that comes in, this is my adaptive card invoke, I'm gonna check for either the ticket previous or the ticket next button. Depending on which one was clicked, what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna grab the, the ticket index and then I'm gonna say, I'm either gonna increment it or decrement it. So if you go back over to our web service, you can see here where there's our increment or there's our index right here. And if I look at the actual card itself, you can see that for my previous button, my increment is negative one and my uh, next button, my increment is positive one. So that way, if I go back to my bot, what that's gonna do is it's either gonna add or subtract a single uh, value from my index to be able to go either forward or backwards with my cards. And now it creates a brand new card. And what it will then do is it will update the existing card that's already in the message uh, so that when someone clicks through it, they will be able to see the next card, the, the message will get updated with the new adaptive card. So let me show you this working. Okay, now that my bot has been installed into my general channel into my test team that I'm gonna use, let's go back over to VS Code. And what I'm gonna do is I need to trigger this support ticket notification. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to uh, use the Postman tool that I have installed in VS Code as an extension. 
and I'm going to post it to the URL of where my endpoint is uh, for my um, for my web service that's running locally. All right, so now we can see it was successfully uh, sent. So if I come back over to Teams, we can see here our notification has popped up and I've got this next and an unknown button. So if I go click one of these buttons here, you can see, I'm not sure what the unknown button is, we'll just ignore that for right now. Uh, but here, you can see that I can then navigate through the, the different uh, support tickets. You can see how they're being updated. The nice thing about this though, is that I'm not creating a new message that I've had a, like a little mini application that's been added to our conversation here that I can just, uh, the user can just do uh, post a, um, either click the previous or the next button to be able to navigate through all these different support tickets. And when they're finished, they can just click dismiss and the message has just now been deleted. So here you can see how you could create a notification bot to replace your existing uh, Office 365 connectors. Do you want the code for this demo? Check out the link in the description below the video to download the code for the demo that you saw here in this video. What do you think about the retirement of Office 365 connectors? What about bots for Microsoft Teams? Let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you wanna see more videos about bots for Microsoft Teams. And if you like this video or found it useful, give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel by reaching more people just like you. And if you haven't already, subscribe by smashing that subscribe button below the video. So you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. And let me know if you wanna see more videos about Microsoft Teams development. I'm Andrew Connell. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.